you have your Bibles, you can be turning to Revelation chapter 6. Anybody else have anything to say? You know, when, uh, I'll tell you one of the hardest things. We was talk, I was talking to my friend here right before church when we started the church here about <clears throat> year. Well, it's going to be two years in January. I'll tell you one thing I learned since I've been pastor in this church. One of the hardest things for me was when I speak. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The Spirit of the Lord's good, and the Spirit of the Lord touches hearts. There's been a many a time I've said in a church service, and the preacher has said something, and he's, he said something, or, is, uh, or maybe even just a testimony or a song, sister, just uh, anything. And, and I feel like uh, the Lord speaks to my heart. Have you, ever, have you ever done that? Sit in church and you're like, well, thank you, Lord, for that answer. Or thank you, Lord, for saying Now, how did that preacher know anything about that? Have you ever said that? I'll tell you, I have. I have, uh, I have sat in church and I've had that done. And I, I've been in church services since I've been here and I've, I've spoke. And I have, uh, now I'll tell you, I know my son says this all the time. I, I pass this church from my heart. I really do. I don't pastor it for the, I don't take a dime from nobody to do this. I study Sister Carter. I know it ain't the best quality in the world, <laughs> but I really do, Brother John A. I study, I study during the week, and, and I tell you, there's times, Brother Mel, the Lord has laid things on my heart, and I know I don't have a peace until I can, I can speak it. And I, if you've never done that, I tell you, it, it, it's one of the, the, one of the best things in the world that you can do is, is if the Lord gives you something to say and you say it, and you say it as the way the Lord would have you to say it. And um, I have spoke and I have said things and I have, uh, you know, I have sort of, how would you say this? You've sort of rung somebody's doorbell. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, now, you've got to accept the fact that if we're in a church house, the preacher's going to preach on sin, Right? He's going to step on our toes every once in a while, isn't he? I'll tell you, the Lord touched. I, I, have, I have sat in this office in here at night. And I say, I don't want to get choked up here. And I have, um, I have studied. And I have went over what I felt like the Lord has given me. And the Lord has touched my heart. I mean, laid it out to me, brother. And I tell you, the Lord, I know the Lord was moving in every word that I wrote down, every note that I wrote down, and I knew the hand of God was on me. And I'm, I, and I'm thankful for those days. You know, and sometimes when the Lord moves in a service and you're sitting in a service, I don't, I don't know who's going to be here. Now, I, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I mean, I'm smart enough to know my wife's going to be here. <laughs> my daughter-in-law is going to be here. My, my children are, they better be here. I know, I know some of them's going to be here. There's, there's real faithful ones that come. And uh, I know they're going to be here, but Lord knows my heart. I don't say nothing against nobody. I love people. I won't say nothing. But the word of the Lord is good for everybody. It's for everybody. And sometimes if I say something that you feel like I know everything about you or, or everything, I don't. I really don't. I had, one, I had one person come here one time, and it about broke my heart. I tell you, I laid in the bed, and I had tears in my eyes. He didn't come back. He, he said I, that I knew everything and anything about everything that was going on in his life, and I didn't even know the fella. I mean, I knew of him, but I didn't know him. The Spirit of the Lord will convict hearts of sin. He will. So whatever I say, I say in love. I do, and I pray that. I pray that, Lord, let me, whatever you have me to speak, whether how tight it is. He's going to get tight every once in a while. You know what I mean? But uh, whatever I say, let me say it in love, the way the Spirit would have me to say it. If you have your Bibles, if you'd like to stand just for the reading of God's Word, Revelation chapter. Now, I didn't say all that to scare you to death tonight. I just said that because that come on my heart tonight. I didn't know who was going to be here and who was not going to be here. Lord knows my heart. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. I'll be reading out of the King James Version Bible here tonight. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, 
I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Verse 17 again, for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Hallelujah. And I would like to speak tonight on a simple title, when grace is gone, when grace is gone. Let's pray and ask the Lord to anoint. Hallelujah. Blessed Father in heaven, Lord, Lord, I come to you again tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your precious presence. Thank you, Father, for your sweet spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearts and souls that are here tonight, Lord. I pray help us to open our hearts and souls and our minds to the truth of your wonderful, precious word. Anoint your servant, I ask, and I ask it all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. When grace is gone, when grace is gone. Have you ever thought you would see the day, like the day we're living in now, where when our nation would, uh, or at least people in our country would no longer accept the, the Constitution is our supreme law, the law of the land. Have you ever thought we'd see that day? That's some rough times we're living in, isn't it? I never thought we'd see that day. People want to uh, change the Constitution as we know it now. The Constitution doesn't fit their, their lifestyle or their life anymore. Not to harp on millennials, but these millennials, these millennials that everyone re keeps referring to, you hear about these millennials, Brother Jerry. These millennials, uh, they have this new self-enlightenment now. That the old way of the Constitution just wasn't completely right. You heard him say that? I heard, I, I, I pulled the news on, I listened to the news. I tried to, I, well, to be honest with you, I listened really to one station. I think we all know which one that one is. And, uh, but anyways, I listened to that one station and, uh, you know, they interview all these people it's supposed to be fair and balanced. And, uh, I listened to some of these other ideas and I'll tell you, I don't know where they pulled them from some of these other ideas, but they don't like, they, they think that we don't need a police department. Well, they need to go move to my old hometown in Chicago. If they don't think they need a police department, brother Randolph, they need to come to where I used to live. 
I'll tell you, it was right rough. They don't like law enforcement, some of these people. They don't like, they don't like a jailhouse. Well, I don't like a jailhouse, but I'm going to tell you, we need them, don't we? For some of these criminals or prisons, they don't like laws at all. Some of them are trying to do away with uh, capitalism as we know it. They want this government-run socialism. They know they can't go down to uh, where the Constitution is and rip it up. So they, rip, you know, they chip away at it just a little bit at a time, brother. They chip away at it. They do everything and anything to get their way. They riot. They rewrite the history. Have you ever thought you'd see the day where these people, these so-called scholars in our universities, they want to rewrite the history. They want to change the laws. They want to rewrite them. They make the good guys the bad guys. They pick on George Washington. They pick on Ben Franklin. I spent a college semester on Ben Franklin, and they run them down. They, uh, they don't like Abraham Lincoln. They even pick on Christopher Columbus, and all he did was discover the free world, Sister Vicki. The poor fella, they want to rip his statue down. All these new self-enlightened people, they're, they're, all of these statues on their chopping block, the writing is on the wall, brothers and sisters, that one day, no doubt, I'm not prophesying here, but no doubt our Constitution is going to be gone. Our freedom as we know it today, sooner or later, I pray it ain't in my lifetime or in my children's lifetime, Miss Early, I pray that it ain't in their time. But one day, just by looking at the signs of the times, it's going to be gone. Our freedom, the way we know our freedom today, it's going to be gone. I'm speaking tonight when grace is gone. Today, my brothers and sisters, together we are living in the times or the dispensation of grace. We're living in grace. We are living today in a time where even the holy angels inquired to see these days of grace. They didn't understand it. Do we as God's children really understand this time of grace, this dispensation of grace? Do we really understand this time that we are really living in? This time of grace? We see in the news, we read in the papers all about this violence and these rioting and, and what have you in these last few months. We see this uproar of these new ideas that are really beyond comprehension. People protesting this law and order, fake news, winds of change blowing in on us like a storm. Even our children are being taught and controlled in, our, in their schools or what have you by these new radical ideas. Change. This pandemic that has paralyzed our nation and our world, our society will never be like it used to be. Our schools, our stores, Uh, I think it was my, uh, my, um, my daughter-in-law was in, uh, was it a Target? No, it wasn't a Target. It was a uh, Home Goods. And the little girl was, my little granddaughter was in there, and they told her she had to put a, a mask on, a two-year-old, little Stella. And if she didn't have this mask on, she wasn't allowed in the store. A little two-year-old. So they, had, they, they told her to strap a big mask. She had a, a big mask on her face. But nothing's ever going to be the same. Our schools, our stores, our businesses, even the modern day church as we know it today, how we worship, let us never forget 
How fortunate that we are having lived in and having tasted this marvelous grace of God. I'm speaking tonight when grace is gone. For thousands of years, this grace that we live in had been prophesied about. People have longed for the day to see these days of grace that we're living in. Amazing grace. Grace. Oh, how sweet the sound. Hallelujah. 2,000 years of grace already. Oh, the love of God that has given this that he has given to us in this world. Why is it that we never comprehend how good we have it until it's gone? Until it's gone. Have you ever said that? Have you ever thought that? We never realize how good we have it, Sister Betty, until it's gone. Grace. Proverbs 6 Chapter 6, verse 9. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want is an armed man. Heaven's clock is ticking, still ticking. The hands of time are moving forward. You believe that? If you don't, go look in the mirror. <laughs> I look in that mirror and I see that gray. I watched one of our videos, my vi uh, the videos when we very first started, and I can't believe how gray I've gotten. I ain't gonna say nothing about my weight. I'm just saying about my gray now. But how gray I'm getting? I'm telling you, I'm getting old, Sister Sue. I'm getting old. But the hands of time are moving forward today. Grace arrived on this earth as a little baby. Lying in a manger back in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. So innocent. So helpless. Our God sent his only begotten son on this earth. God himself come down to earth with man, in man. Isaiah 42 said, talking about the prophecy of Jesus coming on this earth. Isaiah said, I have put my spirit upon him. This is God speaking. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. God's perfect plan arrived for us Gentiles 2,000 years ago. Even the whole world, the grace of God, the plan of salvation for us Gentiles to be grafted in to this family of God. Hallelujah. His divine plan, this wonderful grace of God. I am happy I'm a child of God. I serve the Lord and I, as our brother said, I sacrifice some things some pleasures of this world because I love my Lord. Not bondage, Brother Gilly. Not bondage. I sacrifice some things because I love him and he loves me. So precious is our Lord and Savior that he would even think enough of you and I that we could have this eternal life to be with him forever. Now, some of us haven't been saved that long that are in here. But I'll tell you, it gets sweeter as the day goes by. Hallelujah. It gets sweeter. Hallelujah. Blessed be your wonderful name. God's perfect plan for this, la this lost world. Grace. Amazing grace. 
2,000 years. Hallelujah. He allowed you and I to be born in this time of grace. He has given us children in this time of grace. He's given us family and friends in this time of grace. He has told us to go forth and share the good news of this grace of God. Tell your children and your children's children, Joel said. Tell your children and your children's children, there is grace in our God. There is grace, there is hope in the Lord. Proclaim this grace from the housetops, the word says, to our friends, to the whole world, that they too can be saved and experience this wonderful grace of God. Millions and millions have received, has experienced this grace. Millions. John said that he saw a, a number beyond number. Millions have, ex, have received this grace that I'm talking about tonight. They have submitted to the will of God. And they have lived lives of grace down here on earth. Oh, that we, could, that we could perceive in our finite minds the infinite grace of God He has given us in these last days, these final days. John 3.16, and I think we can all quote this. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son... That whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Grace, amazing grace. I'm speaking tonight when grace is gone. Great Bible men, Adam, Moses, Joshua, David, and so many more would have loved to see these days of grace. This dispensation of grace, hallelujah, that they could come to a house of God and see men's and women's hearts changed. They would have loved to see the, the Spirit of the Lord filling men's hearts and lives. Hallelujah, amen. They would have loved to see that day, to see lives being transformed and set apart of God. You never know how good you have it until it's gone. You never know. Jesus said himself in Matthew 13 that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which we see, which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. In this time of grace, just to think, at an appointed time of God, God came to this earth for all mankind to walk this earth that he created to teach his people the very people that he designed and he created to show them and tell of this marvelous grace, this marvelous grace of God. I am his child. Are you his child tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. He teaches me. He leads and he directs my paths. Hallelujah. And righteousness, my steps. The clock of God is still going minute by minute. Hour by hour, Brother Edkins. Day by day, the clock is going on. Jesus knew that his days were numbered when he was on this earth. He knew it. He knew they were a few his days were limited. My brothers and sisters, so is ours. Our days are limited. Our days, we're no greater than our Lord. 
Our days are limited, Brother Jerry, here on this earth. They are limited. Jesus taught, he talked and he taught in his word that the days are few, that time is short, that there were only a few more days. He foretold of the times and seasons in parables. He wanted the world to know that God himself, his Father in heaven, kept those times, that there is a set order for everything. Everything in God's time. Everything in God's time. Sister Rachel and Sister Monica. And Brother Randolph, if you would, I'd like for Sister Rachel to sing a song. I have a song on my heart tonight, if you could come up. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 53. Foretold of our Lord coming to this earth. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace, of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity, that is the sin of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities." Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul. Talking about Jesus unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. God's perfect plan for grace was to allow his only begotten son to die on a cross. An old rugged cross. Who would have ever imagined the son of God coming down from his throne, hanging on a cross. A cross just to die that we could be saved. What a price. My brothers and sisters, what a price for this wonderful grace that we are living in. The only way was the cross. The only way for us Gentiles to see God, to be saved, to receive this grace. Our Lord had to die on a cross. Sing, Sister Rachel. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 19, if you have your Bibles, maybe you could turn there. Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Jesus, Jesus. And when he was come near, he beheld the city, talking about Jesus, and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast the trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave thee one stone upon another because now knewest not the time of thy visitation. Thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Before our Savior went to the cross and to die for this world, it was on a Sunday, like today. Palm Sunday, it was called. He was coming into Jerusalem for the last time, the last Sunday before he was gone. Our Lord was walking down the Mount of Olives and he stopped when he beheld and seen this magnificent sight of this city, Jerusalem. Jesus in his scriptures, it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known... Even thou, at least in this thy, thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, 
but now they are hid from thine eyes. Jesus is saying here, if you even knew, if you had only known on this, on this day that would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. He is saying that the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an encampment around your city against you. They're going to encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They'll not leave one stone upon another because you didn't recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus is saying to this city of Jerusalem, standing there on this Mount of Olives. Now, I have been there on that path in the Mount of Olives. Sister Burke, I've been there, and I've, I went down that little path where Jesus, where this, this, these scriptures are talking about, behold, in this city of Jerusalem. And it's a beautiful sight. Our Lord was looking at this city of Jerusalem, Brother John A., and he wept over it. He said in these scriptures, he basically is saying, Jerusalem, your time is up. No more opportunity now. You fail to recognize me and the peace that you, that you are seeking for, that you, that you need. History says that just a few years later, that the Roman general Titus fulfilled those prophetic words spoken by our Lord here. Titus, the general and his Romans, they leveled Jerusalem. Thousands and thousands of men and women and children slaughtered. My friend, tonight God's clock is still ticking, it's running. Time waits for no one, period. The Bible foretells of the end of this dispensation of grace. Are you ready for this time? For that time? Have you gotten your house in order? Have you examined your heart, your life, your soul? Like our Lord did over Jerusalem, is he weeping over your soul tonight? Are your eyes open to the realization that time is almost over? Are we weeping for our family and for our children? Are we even concerned enough to weep over our children, our grandchildren, our friends? I'm speaking tonight when grace is gone. In our scripture verses tonight, the saints of God in heaven... At the start, when I first read our scriptures tonight, they cry out to God with a loud voice. How much more time to you judge the people of the earth? And like our Lord prophesied of the judgment of Jerusalem, the judgment of God is coming to this earth. After grace, judgment. After grace, after grace is judgment. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, as we read earlier. And I beheld when he had opened a sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. The stars fell of heaven, fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places after grace, judgment. After grace, when God sends judgment on this world, the mountains are going to move out of their places. These continents that we're standing on here right now are going to slide around out of their places, stars that we enjoy to look at every night in this beautiful county of Culpeper and Rappahannock 
are going to fall to this earth. They're going to be cast down like fruit falling from trees. And it's all going to take place in darkness, total darkness. The sun will be blackened and the moon will become as blood. Verse 15, And the kings of earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? John the Revelator earlier in this, in this book, he says that, that, that he is coming, talking about Jesus in clouds and every eye shall see him and all kindreds, all kindreds, all. One fellow said all means all and that's all all means. That means, that means all country, all nationalities. He says, all kindreds of earth shall wail because of him, because of his appearance, his appearing. I'm going to tell you, wail does not mean a little simple cry. It doesn't mean a heartbreak. It doesn't mean go get your pills. A wail means a crying out, a screaming a crying out, not just a few tears. Nobody will feel sorry for you on that great, terrible day of the Lord, but they will wail when grace is gone. Though they dig into hell, God said, down into the depths of the earth, God will take his hand and he will get them. Though they climb up to heaven, God says he will bring them down. God says he will search for them. Whether they hide up in the mountains or down to the bottom of the sea, he will find them. The Lord is his name, the prophet Amos spoke. We serve a just God that will repay those for their sins. Nobody wants to have to endure this judgment while living on this earth this judgment of God. While living here on earth, we don't want to have to endure that. After the opportunity of grace is gone, after we die, there is an appointment that we all have to attend before we reach our destiny. I'm talking about life on, after, after our life on earth. We all have to come to an appointment. We have an appointment. We all will have to be. Everyone's going to be there. No excuses. You got to go. I have to go. Brother Jerry has to go. Richard Compton's got to go. Marcus, Sill, everyone. Brother Ack, everybody's got to stand in judgment before our Lord. The preacher's telling you right. And I'm telling you because I love you. We're all going to have to make that appointment. And it's called the judgment. After our life of grace, we will stand before our God. We might not want to hear that, but it will happen. Read this holy book. Read it. Listen to the preacher, man. I love you. God loves you. You need to know the truth. But there is still grace now. There is still grace now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a day that is going to be when we stand at that judgment. Everyone. Now, I'm going to tell you, we get, uh, not many of us have to go to court now, hopefully. Hopefully. And stand before the judge. Now I have stood before the judge. For speeding tickets. I said that on video. But I get these summons. I get these summons to court for this jury duty. Do you all get those? Now I'll be honest with you. I'm going to fess up a little bit. The first one I got I tried to get out of. It's not that I didn't want to go. But I have a business. And I had to, 
And it, it's, they always send me one of those things when I'm so busy. And I've got so many things to do. Brother Jerry, I tried my best to get out of that thing. I told my own to business. I tried everything, Sister Vicki. They're like, no, nah, I don't want to hear that. But I had to go. I tried my best. Sister Jenkins, I tried my best to get, to get out of that. But I had to go. I had to go. The judgment. We're all going to have to be at the judgment. It doesn't matter what. We'll stand for what we do. We'll stand for what we say. It doesn't matter what so-and-so has said to you. It doesn't matter what so-and-so has told you that you got to do. It doesn't matter, Brother Jerry. It matters what we do. It matters what we do. It doesn't matter what they tell us that we don't have to do. It doesn't matter what brother and sister so-and-so said. You alone will stand for what you have done. There will always be someone. There will always be someone that will tell you in their own self-enlightenment that you don't have to live a separated life of sin. That you don't have to live a separated life from sin. Somebody is going to tell you that. That all you have to do is just repeat some words and you're saved forever. Sort of like those that are protesting our Constitution and our laws. They want to change God's Word. They want to change God's Holy Word. My friend tonight, don't be the fool. And listen to that. Don't be a fool and listen to anyone that will have you believe that you can sin and go to heaven. Don't listen to that. To some, salvation is nothing but a game. You repeat some nice words. You're then on the good team. Then you get it your get out of jail free card. You collect your $200, your free gift, and then just go on home. Just a Sunday morning game. But my brothers and my sisters, salvation is not a game. It's not a game. This grace that we're living in today, God's grace is not a game. The cross that our Lord died on the price that he paid, the price that he paid, salvation is not a game. This holy book was given to you and I that we might read it and learn it, understand it, and live it. There is a repenting from sin, a turning from sin. Don't commit adultery with sin. There are people that have great credentials. They'd have, they've had wonderful godly parents. They've had wonderful godly grandparents. They are people that have been led by the Spirit. They've had great miracles of God. Then all of a sudden, when they get so close, to the end of their life, their eyes have become dimmed and they forsake their godly heritage. Then all of a sudden, poof! Instant self-proclaimed enlightenment. They in their own mind, in their own selfishness, turn from the truth of God's word into something different unto fables, the word of God says. The person that says things in the name of God that are contrary to this Bible are likened to the adulterous woman. She eateth, she wipeth her mouth, 
and saith, I have done no evil. But when grace is gone, like you and I, she or he will also give account for every last word. Her judgment is coming. When grace is gone, judgment. Hallelujah. Maybe with every head bowed and every eye closed tonight, just for a minute. Just for a minute. Hallelujah, blessed Lord. My friend, we are still under grace tonight. We still have hope in this grace, this amazing grace. We have hope. Sir, there is hope for you. Ma'am, there is hope for you. For your children, for your grandchildren, whosoever will, all under this amazing grace, this dispensation of grace. Time is short. There is time tonight, today, tomorrow, to make everything in our life right with God now. We can spend time in prayer and make things right with our God now. Yes, we can. Do it. His spirit is saying, whosoever will come to this fountain of life. While there is grace, there is truth when we are led by God's spirit. You are here for a reason tonight, my friend. Many of us throughout our life has prayed the prayer of, for God to send us an answer in our life. But if we want God to hear our words, then we must listen to his words. Listen to the voice of God under this great grace. While God is smiling, for truly there are not many days until grace is gone. Life as we know it to be now will be changed forever. When grace is gone, judgment. Hallelujah. Blessed Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your holy word. I thank you, Lord, for your precious word. I thank you, Lord, for your truth. I thank you, Lord, for the love that you've showed your people, that you've showed this world, Lord, that you gave your only begotten son on a cross. Lord, your perfect plan for your people that we might be saved. Tonight, Lord, I pray, Lord, that every heart and every soul in this, this house tonight that's under my voice would make sure in their heart and their life tonight that everything is well in their soul with you. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't know what a day holds, but you know tomorrow. Help us, Lord, to yield to your precious will. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. We would like to, I would like to open up this, off, this altar tonight and invite each and every one that would if you'd like to come and spend a few minutes in prayer. Hallelujah. We got to make sure in our life that our heart is right with our God. While there is time in this great grace. Amen. Amen. Everyone that would, let's pray. Hallelujah. Sing, sissy. Hallelujah. Blessed Lord.